Hey everybody, my name is Kids Coding, and welcome back to another video on the channel. And today we're going to be learning about arithmetic operators. I am really behind in videos, so I really need to make sure that I can um, do them really quickly because I was going to do a video on bootstrap containers. I had that all planned, and then I realized I forgot to teach you all some of that kind of stuff. So I'm here with JavaScript arithmetic operators because I did promise that I would make a video on this. But anyway, let's get started. Arithmetic operators simply perform arithmetic on numbers, and these numbers can be classified in two ways. They're um, literals or variables. So um, let's set up a simple JavaScript. By the way, I'm using Visual Studio Code. I always like to switch where I put it. Like I always used to be a big fan of the notepad. And then I stopped using Notepad because, like, um, how can I describe it? Because, why did I stop using Notepad? I forgot. Because, like, it wouldn't indent and stuff like that, and you would have to do it. But now here it indents. But anyway, so let's get into it. So document dot get element ID demo. There we go. And then we need to do dot inner, which simply equals X. And I think from there we're good to go. So let's save it and then let's go to the files. And as you simply see, it becomes 150 because 100 plus 50 is 150. So let's go back to our thing. Right here, we said x is 100 plus 50, and then we and then we asked what would it be after we added the two together, and that is 150. Pretty self-explanatory. So then we can do it, and we can approach the same thing a little bit different. Let's say we made a 100, and then let's say we made b 50. And then let's say, oh, let me do semicolons there. And then let's say we did another variable x. And then let's simply say a plus b. And then do another semicolon. And I think from there we're good to go. So let's save it and reload. It's still the same result because as you see right here, um, it's just um, we made at A100, we made B50, and then we asked to add them together. So we basically assigned a value to a variable. The value was 100, and we assigned it to A. The value was 50, and we assigned it to B. We added them together to make 150, which is what X is. So that's, just, so that's pretty much what happened. So those were both examples of how you can do literals and variables. Right here was variables. The example before this was literals. Um, you can do something called an expression, which combines both of them together. So let's say I did um, something like that, and then I had times 3 at the end. As you see, it just simply becomes 450, because we added 150 together, which, is, which are A and B, and then we multiplied it by 3, which was a literal, and then that became 450. Just a refresher, literals are simply just numbers and variables are letters. Anyway, um, we then have something called, we then can approach it the same way for subtraction. So um, let's say I, I did x equals a minus b. And then I saved it and then I reloaded it. I just see it, it would be simply 50. Um, because 100 minus 50 is 50, and we assign both those values to both those variables, making it 50. And then, um, we have the multiplication sign. Um, the multiplication sign simply, um, multiplies the two together. Um, it's an asterisk mark. Um, make sure we don't use an X, otherwise the browser will think that it's the letter X, not the multiplication sign. So, we use the asterisk for multiplication. Come here, reload. 5,000 because 100 times 50 is 5,000. Before I get any more into this, I just want to say that um, I want to talk about something. 
So right here, let me, um, the A and the B are something called operands. And they are basically the variable slash literals that are being, that are associated with the um, sign to be a new result. I hope you get it. The A and B are simply operands. And then right here, the sign is the operator, and it shows what is going to be computed to make a new result with the operands. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, then I'll have it posted on my website at kidscoding.com. So be sure to check it out. But anyway, once again, A was A and B are the operators. The operation sign is always the operator. And A and B are operands. So yeah, A and B are operands, and the operation sign is the operator. I hope that makes sense. So um, then we have division, which is the slash. So that means if we did that, then that would simply become two. So those were the four simple arithmetic operators. Um, then we have things that are a little bit different than usual. We have a modulus. If you don't know what modulus is, it's kind of like a remainder when you divide. So, and that's usually expressed as a percentage. So um, if we do a percent of B and then we save it, the answer is gonna be zero because 150 come out evenly to be two. So it doesn't have any remainder. But if it did something like 51, for example, and the remainder would be 49. Oh my bad. The remainder would simply be 49. So what it's really doing is that it's calculating the remainder between two operands. And then once again, the percentage is the operator. So that's how modulus works. It pretty much finds a remainder and it's expressed as a percentage. Then we have the increment operator. The increment operator is simply, it just simply adds an, a number by one. So um, let's say we made X five. Let me get rid of the A and B. So let's say I made X five. And then I did X and then two additions and then a semicolon so the increment um the increment operator is expressed as two addition signs and what what it really does is that it now nah, i don't really think we need that but so what it really does is that it just increments one from whatever x is so if i were to save this and reload it would just simply become six because it's incrementing one from what it originally was. So if X was five in this scenario, then if we did the increment operator, it would become six. So it just simply increments one. We then have something called the decrement operator, which simply does the opposite, and it's notated by two subtractions. So what that really does is that it subtracts one from the number. If I made it something like 10 or something like that, it would just decrement one. So it just subtracts one of whatever the original value of x is. And the increment operator adds one from what the original value of x is. Then we have something called the exponent operator. Um, so if I made x5, and then I made y2, um, and then let's say we had, right? Let me make sure I'm doing it properly. Yeah. And then let's say I did, let's see if that works. Yeah, there's a problem. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so let me get rid of that. And then let's say, that should work. And now you see, it says 25. So simply what the exponent operator does is that it makes it um, assigns values to variables. So um, it makes x5 and it makes y2. So we assign both of them. And then we said x to the power of y makes what? So five to the power of two is 25. And the exponent operator is noted down by two asterisks. And yeah, that is pretty much how that works. Okay, so do you see a difference between the two now? So what the difference actually is, is that one of them has a parentheses and the other one doesn't. So um, if you don't know about PEMDAS, I think many of you already do, it's on the screen. 
parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction are done from left to right. So, um, yeah. So, the browser recognizes PEMDAS and it does it in PEMDAS. So, like, calculators, I don't think they follow PEMDAS, but the browsers, they follow PEMDAS. So, they do it in that order. So, like, here, in this scenario, the parentheses would be done first, then it would be multiplied by 3. Here, the multiplication would be done first, then the addition. Therefore, causing two different results, even though it's a similar equation. So, right here, um... Right here, the parentheses are going to be done first. So, um, it's going to be 150. It's okay. So the parentheses are going to be done first. So 100 plus 50 is 150. And then we multiply it by three to make 450. Usually multiplication is always done before addition. But since we added the parentheses and parentheses comes first in PEMDAS, we do the parentheses first. So 100 plus 50 is 150 times three, which is 450. But if I remove the parentheses and I did it, you would see that it's a completely different result because the multiplication was done first, then the addition. It makes a lot more sense if you already understood what PEMDAS is. I'm not really good at explaining it, but it's really just parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division. So that's just how the order, how it goes. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses first, exponents second, multiplication, division, third, fourth, left to right, addition, subtraction, fifth, sixth, left to right. So it's better if you understood how I think how PEMDAS works. I think many of you probably already know what PEMDAS is, but yeah, that's how it works. And then I think, according to PEMDAS, once again, addition and subtraction, multiplication, division are done from left to right. So it does 150 first, and then it does minus 3. So that was pretty much it with this video. If you if you enjoyed it, be sure to post a like or put a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel for more notifications. Follow my Instagram. Check out my website at kidscoding.com. And I'll see you guys in the next upload.